Do you think you got what it takes to build your own dream team? And Owens with a move and a foot race to Owens inside the 23 bombers. Both catch him and it's a touchdown. We'll log in and play with the big boys. Deep drop for Bo Mitchell and a deep toss now. Partnered with Fantasy.ca, Rouge Radio presents the CFL Fantasy Podcast. And now your CFL Fantasy Insiders, Dave Dawson and Rob Dalton. Fantasy Football Podcast, episode number three, heading into week seven in the CFL season with Dalton and Dave on the new Rouge Radio. That's right. Fantasy.ca is the place to get your CFL official fantasy football product. Adults, none of that stuff that we've talked about before, that there are some pretenders out there, but if you want the real CFL fantasy football experience, Fantasy.ca is a place to be. Yeah, and if you know, if you get your information elsewhere, you've got what we call Keith Shulligan syndrome, I guess. As we will get to that a little bit later on in the show. No Shots at Keith Shulgin if you do listen to this. And I know we have a lot of CFL players that do listen to this, and that's actually right where we're going to start, Dalts. Great segue there, my friend. Um, I have a feeling that the Calgary Stampeders do listen to our fantasy football podcast. Yeah, who doesn't? Exactly. <laughs> and you know why I think that they do listen? Well, from a big game out of number 16 in red last week. Yeah, Mark Way McDaniel, we told him, we told you, and stay cautious. Tread what? Tread lightly when you're uh, in regards to Marque McDaniel. Don't bench him, but mm, probably not a good idea to start uh, to, to start him in your lineup. And he had probably his best game as a Stampeder. Yeah, it probably his best game in years that I've seen that Mark Way McDaniel. So, but uh, we will we will get to that in a little bit, and where we think Mark Way McDaniel's potential goes for the rest of the season. Uh, we did say avoid Sam Hurl. Yeah, got himself his first pick of the year as well, and I look good too. So, but one thing we did say is uh, Alex Hall. He would be a guy who would probably start it slow and turn it around, and he did look good in Edmonton. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, granted, it was against a uh, an injured, plagued Edmonton offensive line, but you've got to give credit where credit is due, and that uh, Alex Hall is a guy that we've been expecting to get into the sack uh, stack sack stat category uh, sooner rather than later. And I don't imagine this guy or anybody on that Saskatchewan D line to be slowing down anytime soon. Yeah, they're definitely picking up, and what better way to pick up when you get to play 49 minutes of football (laughs) (laughs) if, at the very least, the Riders were on the field last week for, I don't know the exact stat, but the Riders' defense was out there for a while. Guys that uh, will be out of the game for a while. A lot of injuries in the lineup the last weekend. Why don't we start right there? Lineup changes. C.J. Gable could be gone for the year with that elbow injury. Dolph, that did not look good in that game yesterday. It didn't look good, and he was rushed to the hospital right away. The good thing is that I think there are reports is that, yes, it looked ugly, but at least at this point, after um, original evaluation, is that it doesn't look as bad as originally thought. Now, did they originally thought he's that he lost his elbow or what? Because it looked bad. Uh, I don't foresee him being, based on that, I don't foresee him being gone for the season. But I I can imagine where he's probably gone for at least until week 17, 18, or even possibly the playoffs. Yeah, he he was screaming in pain and swearing. Mm -hmm. He could pull that feed through on TSN. So CJ Gable is a guy that you're going to want to put on your bench or maybe even drop. Hey, if you have an injury reserve, put him on there if you can. But um doesn't look very promising for Mr. Gable in the near future. Andy Fantuz, same injury as well. He injured his elbow, too. No update on him yet, but that does give some opportunities for different Hamilton receivers to get some action as well. Nate Kuhorn, he's going to be gone for a couple of weeks. He will not be playing this week. Maybe not the week after, but he could be back in action the following week. TJ Lee is a guy in B.C. who's out of the lineup this week, and simply because Dalt's, He's not able to cover guys the way that uh, Jeff Tedford would hope he would. Yeah, it really sucks for people that do have him on their fantasy team because he's getting points by virtue of tackles. The bad thing for the BC Lions is 
he's getting tackles because he's getting beat. So it's kind of like a, a catch-22 uh, in respect where it's kind of like fantasy team guys are fighting Jeff Tedford. One wants points, the other one <laughs> just wants to stop points from happening. So that's... <laughs> If only the Lions could get – if only you could get points for tackles in the end zone because D.J. Lee has been doing a couple of those. He hit that right on the head there. Jamel Richardson, gone from the Riders. Could he end up somewhere else, Dalton, in the CFL? I'm not too sure. I mean, he he finished off 2013 with a season-possible career-ending injury. I'm not too sure what happened with him in Saskatchewan. They, they, they just said that he's, he's done. So I'm not too sure if there's injury concerns. I'm not too sure if there's any other team out there that is needing uh, a guy like Jamel Richardson. Uh, maybe... M- Maybe, maybe Winnipeg, maybe even Calgary if injury concerns are, are, are relevant there. But I think the, the career of Jamel Richardson may be over. Yeah, that's, I would have to agree. I mean, maybe back in Montreal again. It probably could be a good fit for him there. But uh, speculation right now, more information will be released when it sounds like on Wednesday. But it could very well be the end of Jamel Richardson's career. Corey Williams and Devin Wilson will be battling for his spot in the lineup. Tyrell Sutton looks to be out of the lineup this week with a knee injury. Brandon Rutley is back in. And Shakir Bell will be able to concussion this week for Edmonton. No word on how long that'll be happening for. And, hey, our favorite whipping boy is back in the lineup at running back for the Eskimos this week. Yeah, Ch- Chad Simpson, he's uh, one injury away from somebody else taking, uh, taking uh, carrying the carrying the, the rock in the Edmonton backfield. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't uh, mention our autocorrect of the day uh, that happened on Twitter in <laughs> regarding to Brandon Rutley. Now, Dave, you and I have, have messaged each other, have, have chatted uh, to each other through text and Facebook Messenger, and usually it's me that comes up with the autocorrect, hence the hashtag Dalt's autocorrect. Do you, do you want to run through the, the most recent autocorrect that uh, happened on Twitter today? Yeah, I probably could. Uh, I could probably pull that up for you all. And I, I've known Dalt's for a long time, and he has been known to send the occasional text or tweet out there, and it doesn't. Uh, you kind of look at it kind of cross-eyed going, huh? Oh, oops, autocorrect again. But here is exactly what happened this morning on our Fantasy Football Insider account at CFL Fantasy R. R for Rouge Radio. Hashtag Alouette's running back Tyrell Sutton injured his right knee and could be out this week. Brandon Rutley is a good option on your wife, <laughs> which I'm, I meant to say on your wire, but autocorrect, you win that battle. Brandon Rutley, I don't know if you're a good option on anyone's wife. I'm just hoping that you're a great option on the wire. And that's what happened today. So I, I, I have to say there were a few chuckles on our, uh, on our Twitter page that people got out of that one, and that was definitely more than enjoyable. We'll get to the tweets a little bit later on of the show here, and we have a lot of questions from different listeners. Who should we start? Who should you bench? And uh, a lot of the, the other product, we're getting questions from them and who, uh, who they should start this week as well. The guys who are back soon from injury, Jermaine Gabriel in Toronto, he got pulled off the sixth game last week, will not play this weekend, but he could be back next week. Siobhan Walker will be a game-time decision for Ottawa this weekend, but uh, as Dalton I will talk about in a little bit, I don't know why you want to have an Ottawa running back on your roster anyway. They don't use them. Nick it's... Moore. Of the... <laughs> <laughs> they do not use them. And all right back to my soapbox last year, Dalton, for a guy who's now coaching the Regina Rams of the Canada West Football Conference. Just have a, a eleven for running backs and them getting the the, the, the touches in the backfield. <laughs> there, it's my soapbox. It's forever my soapbox, over and over and over again. Nick Moore of the Bombers was seen on the practice field this week, but he was not practicing again. This is being recorded on Tuesday. That could change as we progress into the week. The Bombers again do not play till Sunday, so they have a bit of an extended week to be able to practice. And Taquan Underwood. He is on the one-game injured list, and that's with the news of Andy Fantuz's injury, not knowing how severe that will be yet. That it could spell good news for Taquan Underwood, and it also spells great news for Terrell Singfield, who still has a job if Andy Fantuz is out for a while, because he's a guy that Dalton and I both expected to have uh, some pretty decent performance this year, but no idea what happened to him. He's a guy that nine times, uh, probably nine out of ten people that have him are probably keeping him in hopes that he's going to light it up, whereas the other person just dropped him back in week one. Yeah, drop, add, drop, add, drop, add. Terrell Singfield, one of the most common names on a fantasy football waiver wire. Guys that you should be adding right now, 
two guys in the Edmonton receiving core adults, Kenny Stafford and Wallace Miles. Yeah, those are those are guys that are obviously as Matt Nichols is progressing in the Edmonton Eskimo backfield, uh, as he's looking through his reads. Obviously, not every ball is going to go to your buddy Nate Huber or a Darius Bowman, so he's going to have to spread the ball just like Mike Riley has uh, in the past. And so I expect guys like Kenny Stafford and Wallace Miles to to rack up the fantasy points, especially considering they're going against a team like the BC Lions. Speaking of C.J. Gable's injuries, we did mention before. Rumors are, and they could be true, Nick Grigsby is going to be back again in the CFL. Only a few short weeks after getting released by the Ticats, he will be going back to the Hamilton Ticats. But I know adults doesn't really have high expectations of this young man. Oh, first up, I have to laugh at the fact that uh, we're in our, our own, our, one of the two fantasy leagues that we're in. We talked a guy into dropping him, and then days later, uh, rumor has that he's going to re-sign with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but with that offense in Hamilton, they're a pass first, pass second type team. So, not, if you dropped him, don't feel bad about it. But if you grabbed him, feel bad about it. Well, and drop him was what Nick Grigsby does with a passing game because he doesn't catch well to the backfield. But maybe that will change on his next term in the CFL. Anthony Woodson had a pretty decent game for the Hamilton Tiger Cats on Monday. However, you don't really see a game-breaking speed out of Woodson. He's more of a responsible runner, which is why, Dalts, I don't really expect him to pull some massive games together in black and yellow. Yeah, I mean, this all goes back to the to the Hamilton offense and how they run and how they operate with their uh, with their running back. Yeah, he might be able to run out of uh, run out of the backfield as far as a pass and uh, pass and run. Uh, he's not a type of uh, he's not your prototypical runner that's going to get you six or seven yards per touch. He's a guy that's going to give you four or five yards per cut to catch or touch, maybe even a little bit less. So over the average of, a, of the average game, based on how many touches he's ex- expected to get, he's not going to get you that much uh, that many fantasy points in your team. Another guy that will be getting lots of touches over the next few weeks now that he's back in the lineup. He had a big game on Monday for the Hamilton Ticats, and they are kind of the theme of the ads, actually, for this week on almost every position. Luke Tasker is back, and he is up to the task, and he will be for the rest of the season. Yeah, he's he slowly but surely coming back from injury. He's becoming what we all expected him to be. Zach Kalaros is number one target, not in the fourth quarter. That was expect. Uh, that of course was Andy Fantuz, and I expect Tasker to continue against a an improving Winnipeg defense this week, but a, a dominant uh, performance from Tasker on Sunday. Tasker is also a good uh, option if you're in a points per reception league because he may not get a lot of those big, big 30, 40 yard passes, but he's going to get a lot of those 15 to 20 yarders, which will get you three points, one for the reception and two for the yardage if you're in a league like ours. Brandon Rutley is an option, as we mentioned before, for the Montreal Alouettes with Tyrell Sutton being out, and he's a guy that does get used a, a fairly regularly, or he did last week at least. I'm going to fire through a few of these here. Uh, Kiel Anton, as Galtson I did mention in BC, he's a guy that was featured last week now that he's healthy. The Lions will need to find a way to put him in the lineup because he is a game-breaker as well as uh, another guy that has emerged back on the scene. He was in Edmonton last year, battled John White for a job, and ended up being the odd man out. That's Tyler Thomas in Bomberville with the problems at running back, Galtz. Could we see Tyler Thomas in the lineup fairly soon? I, I think right now the way things are going, this is the Cam Marshall show, and Paris Cotton is the ever-loving sidekick. So, yeah, Tyler Thomas is, is, has been practicing, and I don't know if he's been officially signed. So at this point, keep him in mind. Don't be quick to add him to, uh, to, your, to your team unless you are very thin at running back. Darvin Adams is a guy who's going to be seeing a lot of balls going forward for the Bombers. Got asked that a couple of times over the last week. He's the real deal. I listened to the Bombers postgame show last week, and Mike O'Shea loves him. Drew Willie loves him. He's going to be seeing a lot of targets going forward. Another wide receiver is Courtney Taylor. He's no fluke. Now that he's back and healthy again, he's getting the balls from Emmanuel Arsenault. He has more of a, a chemistry with Travis Lue right now. Another couple of guys here just to finish it off. I know... Daltz is really high on one of them. I'll start off with Eric Norwood on the defensive end for the Ticats. Expect big game after big game after big game out of that young man. And another one 
in the secondary. Two of them, actually. Donald Washington for the Ty Cats, replacing Delvin Bro's cornerback spot. He had a beautiful game for Hamilton on Monday. And none other than Emmanuel Davis, Daltz, is a guy that I know you really enjoy watching play right now. Yeah, he's a player that was was actually on his A game, and I didn't really expect him to get a lot of fantasy points away because he had a lot of pass knockdowns. And then, yeah, I, I, t- I took a look, and yeah, he, I think he was uh, probably on, um, amongst the top three in defensive secondary um, average points for that last week. So Emmanuel Davis, if you have him, and even though he's probably low on a totem pole as far as average points, grab him because in that defense, he's, he's his star is sure to rise. Manuel Davis definitely had himself a heck of a game last week. Stats-wise, he was at six tackles, Donald Washington, seven tackles, and a sack. Definitely nothing wrong with that. That Hamilton defense, you can pretty much pick up anybody because uh, don't forget Rico Murray in there as well. Guys to avoid, anybody in Ottawa carrying a football, and I mean <laughs> out of the backfield, be it Siobhan Walker, Jeremiah Johnson, anybody. If he's a running back in, Mont- in Ottawa, Avoid them. Why don't? Just they don't run. It's like the uh, it's either <laughs> it, it's either Henry Burris doesn't refuses to hand it off uh, as an option, or they just don't call for it. And I think in that kind of offense, it's not. Luckily in 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 Ottawa, it they're not suffering from it. They're they're a very improved, well rounded football team. However, for fantasy purposes, if you have an Ottawa running back, uh, you're probably a little bit more better off getting John Delahunt. <laughs> I was waiting for that one there. Perfect way to end it. Yeah, I think that will be the case with the Ottawa is they'll get, you know, 40, 50 yards and maybe uh first and goal touchdown potentially. But for the most part, you're not going to get the big yardage that you do out of any of the other prototypical running backs. Chad Owens is another one. Surprise, surprise. His numbers go down. I enjoyed our tweet last week that Chad Owens' annual injury was here. And for anyone who did any fantasy football homework, it shouldn't impact them whatsoever. I love that tweet you sent out. Yeah, I mean, let's see. I'm not too sure if it's annual or semi-annual or, or however you want to word it. But unfortunately, Chad Owens is such a fantastic talent. It's unfortunate. That guy just can't stay healthy. And not to mention that, the Toronto Argonauts have many, many other weapons at their disposal right now. Vidal Hazelton had a heck of a game on Monday. Chris Getzlaff is another guy to avoid in Saskatchewan. Surprise, surprise. I was hoping for more out of him this year. You could blame Darian Durant. I thought the new rules would open him up, but he's pretty much an average player at best. He's a fifth or sixth receiver. If you're that deep, there's more options than Chris Getzlaff. Macho Harris is another guy. I'll just rip through the rest of these, and you can avoid looking at Macho Harris. He's uh, If he's making tackles, they're probably going to get knocked out because the fact of pass interference. So if he grabs a guy, tackles him down, it'll get negated because of a pass interference call. Or he's just getting flat out beat. So Macho Harris isn't a guy that you want to have on there. Willie Jefferson in Edmonton, I'm a little disappointed there. And I think more than anything, it was just because of Marcus Howard's health. I wasn't expecting Marcus Howard to stay healthy this year. So Howard's got the good numbers. Willie Jefferson's been a bit of a disappointment. He's getting the pass rushes, again, in the fantasy football department. As a football player, he's playing well. But fantasy football-wise, Willie Jefferson isn't a guy that I'd have on my roster right now. Guys that you want to trade for. Oh, pardon me. Guys that Keith Shulgin <laughs> syndrome, as Dalton and I did mention a little earlier on in the show, and if you're new to our fantasy football podcast, no offense to Keith Shulgin. I think he's an outstanding football player and a great human being. But, again, as fantasy football goes, it's different than regular football. You can look at guys like Abdul Kane, who's an outstanding football player, may not get you that many fantasy football points because a lot of his passes are going to be knocked down rather than tackled. Keith Shulgin, the same thing. He's not going to tackle a lot of guys. He's not going to sack a lot of people. But two weeks ago, he had a big game. And I know there are a lot of people that ran to the waiver wires to pick up Keith Shulgin. Why are you picking up Keith Shulgin? He gets one sack a year. Like, why are you doing that? So we dubbed this, this segment Keith Shulgin Syndrome. So, adults, the first one will start. None other than the guy who made us look stupid last week, number 16 in red. Yeah, Mark Way McDaniel. We told you to stay away from him, and what does he do? Like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, the guy has probably one of those best games 
uh, as a Stampeder. Probably his last good game that he had, Kevin Glenn was tossing passes to him when they were both wearing black and gold in Hamilton. Yeah, I would have to agree. So Mark Ray McDaniel, good football player, responsible, second down, uh, that clutch catch kind of guy, but he's not going to have those big, big games because why? You have Eric Rogers, you have Jeff Fuller, even Greg Wilson looked pretty good for Calgary last week, and they're on the bye week anyway. So if you're starting Mark Wayne McDaniel this week, <laughs> you've got bigger problems, my friend. Buy yourself a CFL schedule. Brandon Galanders, running back, Toronto Argonauts. Xander Robinson syndrome. Is a, uh, he did get a touch here and there before Robinson got injured. But if you're adding Brandon Galanders, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Any, anybody that you add as far as in uh, in that Toronto backfield not named Brandon Whitaker or Anthony Coombs, uh, I'm not too sure who will. I mean, what are you thinking? Like, what kind of touches are you thinking that he's going to yeah, have? If you're that deep, if you're that deep, Brandon Glanders is a guy. He had a big game last week, but he's not going to have it again. And Sam Hurl is another one. Finally got his first pick of the year. And I imagine, Dalts, if Ian Wild does get cut in the NFL – Sam Hurl might get hurled out the door as well. Well, I, it's unfortunate because I really think the Bombers' defense is really figuring this new rules and their schemes out with Richie Hall. Having said that, Sam Hurl, is, and I think they recognize it because the way that they scheme is that their tackles – are going to be coming from one linebacker that I think is a complete stud, and that's Khalil Bass. And I think they realize that, and that's how they're funneling all the runs to guys like Bass or guys like uh, Chris Randall. Sam Hurl is not your prototypical middle linebacker, and you shouldn't expect the same kind of stats. Slap a Bass if you get a chance to grab him on your waiver wire. If he is in your waiver wire in your fantasy football league, please hit me up on Twitter. Twitter. I want to join your fantasy football league. <laughs> and we'll get to Twitter here right away, as we did have some questions to start and drop ads and pickups, that kind of thing. You can follow us on Twitter at CFL Fantasy RR, myself at Dave Dawson 7, and adults at Rouge Dolts. Dolts, we got a lot of questions this week. Where do we start? Well, Matty Ice at uh, Ice underscore Matty35 sent us a tweet in regarding to uh, Gable or Chevy Walker. Uh, they would be available. Should I put up in claim? Well, I think we've already covered that since Sutton, Gable, and Walker. Well, Gable and Sutton are injured. Walker is healthy, but he's an Ottawa Red Black. So, unfortunately, I'm not too sure who is available or, you know, if there's any other options available. Dave, is there any sleeper trick out there? Maybe reach out and grab Cam Marshall if he's available. Matty Ice, I would say look at Brandon Rutley as an option, possibly if it's just this week. I would even entertain trading for somebody. Who do you have at receiver? I think there's a chance you can be able to flip someone, get a running back, a guy that I want to have my hands on at running back right now, and he's not even he hasn't even reached potential yet as where he could possibly go, obviously, aside from Andrew Harris. But another guy that you want to look at is, uh, you know, I honestly think, I wonder, going forward, if Anthony Allen might find himself a new home. I, I, I don't know. Potentially, if the Riders keep losing in the weeks coming, Jerome Essam is their guy because of ratio. I wonder if Anthony Allen might find himself a new home. He might get traded. You don't adults really see during the year a lot of CFL trades during this season, but the Riders keep losing and losing and losing. I wonder if Anthony Allen might find himself a new home. You heard it here first. Dave Dawson predicting Anthony Allen's going to be traded. There's a guy yeah, that you could potentially. <laughs> there's a guy you could potentially be getting your hands on. But you know, as as Daltz did mention before, a Brandon Whitaker I think is a good option because the way that he does run. I know in years past we've whipped on him because he always gets injured, but the way that they use him in Toronto is another guy that I would go after. And you know what? Even Tory Harrison, I'd say right now, compared to uh, the way Matt Walter is uh, carrying the ball, Tory Harrison, I think, is a guy that suits that Calgary offense a little better, and he's got a little more game-breaking speed. So if you're able to get Tory Harrison right now, that could be a potentially good pick for you. What else we got? Uh, Mark Shifley, 55. That's not your real name. Uh, he's at Robert Marv Nine. That's not your real name either. Uh, he's I guess he's a, he's from Winnipeg. I imagine. I would hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, it's uh, I'm not too sure. A little confusing. Name. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he sent us a screenshot of uh, of his TSN uh, fantasy league uh, again. We're going to say 
We're not going to say anything bad about those guys, but uh, yep. I, I, and if you have an opportunity, have they're, a good bunch, <laughs> bunch of people. <laughs> Fantasy.ca is where it's at. Anyways, uh, he wants us to give us his opinions, and uh, is there going to be a podcast this week? Obviously, we're recording. Uh, he's got Trevor Harris as his quarterback, Andrew Harris as his running back, uh, Bakari Grant, Kevin Elliott as his receivers, Verdal Hazelton as his flex receiver, Boris Beattie as his kicker, and, of course, Edmonton Eskimos as his defense. Right off the bat, I love Andrew Harris, and I know Dave loves his Andrew Harris too. But if you're playing Edmonton and you're, yeah, yeah that Edmonton defense, whether or not, and I mean, Andrew Harris broke the hundred yard uh, rushing against Winnipeg, and that's that's Winnipeg. Uh, and I thought Winnipeg was improving. This is Edmonton. You might break a long a long rush, a long about one or two twenty yard scampers here and there. I, I don't know what kind of impact Andrew Harris is going to have against that Edmonton Eskimo team. Now, other, other than that, uh, Mark Shifley, 55, um, I like your team. I really do. Uh, if you had the option, probably maybe Luke Tasker over Bakari Grant, but you can't go wrong with Bakari Grant. What a, what a good year this guy's having. Oh, and it's so exciting to watch Bakari Grant. I think it's just so great. When you can see a player who, you know, is having a bounce back year like Bakari Grant, uh, I don't know why I have such a man crush on this guy, but I just love the way he's able to turn it around and make himself a season. I think that's fantastic. If you have Bakari Grant, he's not going to get you a massive game every week, but I think he will be responsible again this year, especially if Andy Fantuz is going to be a long-term. Bakari Grant is a good option there. So I think, yeah, Tasker in, in at receiver. I think even at running back, Kendall Lawrence. I'm not sure how TSN has him listed if a slot back or running back, but I think Kendall Lawrence would be a good option there. Even Brandon Rutley against an Ottawa defense. But, again, Ottawa at home, that's a difficult task to match up there. And I'm not sure. Like, even Ottawa's got an underrated run defense. So, I'd say Kendall Lawrence in for Andrew Harris. I say uh, Tasker in for Bakari Grant. I don't mind Kevin Elliott. I would even say, huh, who's another receiver you can throw in there? Fred Stamps is back this week. Maybe even Fred Stamps in there for Montreal, potentially. But uh, I think Kevin Elliott is, I think, should be a safe bet. And Boris Beatty, a kicker, not a bad one. If Daltz would have dressed his uh, kicker, oh, God, don't. <laughs> he could have had a different result. Sorry, did I reveal that? Oh, man. So, uh, I, I, I dropped in two separate leagues. I dropped In one league, I dropped Rene Paredes. In the other league, I dropped Liram Harilahu. And I picked up Boris Beatty in both and, and obviously the click did not work on my computer because neither one of my leagues had a had a kicker started. Oh, such is life. And, uh, and defensively, to me it's a toss-up between Hamilton or Edmonton. I think BC at home, the late game, you know, their offense has been sputtering. It's probably a safe bet, but also the Hamilton Tiger Cats defense right now. Between it's 1A and 1B, so for me – it doesn't really make a difference which one you go there, adults, unless you have anything to contest that with. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's kind of like, I, I mean, I, the Edmonton Eskimos defense has put up some ungodly numbers uh, or godly like numbers, and I mean, half of it has to do with their competition. I mean, Brett Smith playing his uh, his first start, and of course, the week before that was Brian Brom playing pretty much the majority of that game. But you can't take anything away from that Edmonton Eskimo defense. Any defense that has Odell Willis, Marcus Howard, Aaron Grimes, J.C. Sherritt, Pat Watkins, uh, the, the, the list, list, yeah, list goes on, list goes on and on. But you know what? You're right. I mean, the same could be said in Hamilton. Justin Hickman, Eric Norwood, Ted Laurent, Simone Lawrence, Brandon Stewart, even well, uh, Johnny Sears if he was healthy, uh, Emmanuel Davis. The list goes on and on over there. So it is a very trick. I mean, if you, it's one of those things that if you're working on a buy, yeah. Grab Hamilton uh, if Edmonton's on a buy, and then grab Edmonton if Hamilton's on a buy. I mean, sure, sooner rather than later, that's going to work out for you. Yeah. So this week, I would say between Edmonton and Winnipeg, I would say dress Edmonton's defense. I think you should be okay there. Uh, one other tweet that we missed out that uh, Matty Ice thirty five did ask: Who will start a running back for Ottawa this week? It's a game time decision between Siobhan Walker and Jeremiah Johnson. But either way, it doesn't like matter. That I mentioned, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> is what we should have put in there. Uh, the last tweet that we have for uh, start and add for the week. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I love this question from Brandon. So uh, Brandon Sora sixty four. 
uh, D is his name. Uh, it's not an add or drop question, but who would you start this week as number three, Denmark or Dressler? His number one and two is S.J. Green and Chris Williams. I like this team. I love this question because I like to think Denmark is on the rise uh, against even against Hamilton, but you got to go Dressler against a very uh, a very iffy Toronto secondary, and I think Brett Smith has figured out a little bit quicker. I'm not saying that Saskatchewan's going to win, but sure enough, he's going to give you some fantasy points, uh, especially with Weston Dressler uh, as your primary target. I think with the sky falling in Saskatchewan this week, they were forced to cater to create an offense that Brett Smith can be able to be successful in, and that'll be using Western Dressler quite a bit. So I would have to agree with Dalt. Western Dressler is the guy that you want to go with this weekend. And before we forget him, two weeks in a row, we also did get a question from Mark Andre Genard, who's a new follower and a new user to fantasy football, who did ask us to look at his lineup as well. And he does have Rakeem Cato. As a starting quarterback, Shakir Bell at running back. And, Mark, you want to swap out Shakir Bell there because he's injured this week. Yeah, I mean, I'm not too sure. Again, this all comes down to who is available uh, to, uh, like, as far as your running back. Uh, I think we've gone through this. Stay away from, <laughs> stay away from Ottawa's running back. You, you may even, you may even venture to grab Cam Marshall, who might even get a little bit more touches this week against a, uh, a very stingy Hamilton defense. Or you want to go against anybody playing Saskatchewan. Yeah, and I think Chad Simpson might actually even be a decent pickup. Maybe the only time you'll ever hear me say that on a fantasy football podcast. But it's the TSN uh, fantasy football predictor here that Mark did send us a question through. So Akeem Cato, a quarterback, I think should be a safe bet there in Ottawa. Chad Simpson for Shakir Bell, even Brandon Rutley may not be a bad one. Chris Williams, I like SJ Green. Tory Gurley against that Saskatchewan secondary, I think, should be okay. Even at Tory Gurley, I think uh, Dalton, I mentioned before, maybe swap in Luke Tasker for Tory Gurley. I think that should be a safe bet. Boris Beattie at kicker, and again, the Edmonton Eskimos defense. So, Mark Andre, thank you for sending those questions in. So, the two changes we do recommend, consensus Dalton, is uh, swap out Shakir Bell for a running back as well as Gurley for Luke Tasker. Thumbs up? I would go thumbs up with that and uh, double thumbs up if you manage to acquire a kicker and dress him, unlike what I did this past week. <laughs> so you've acquired some knowledge. Take it or leave it if you want to. Fantasy.ca is the place to go for your fantasy football information. Feel free to follow our regular podcast online as well at Rouge Radio. Tony will be joining us to record tomorrow night as we have the Brian from the BC Lions Den on to talk about some football going on in BC because that's what our football podcast is about. It's about football, and there's a bit of a, a quarterbacking problem apparently in BC if you listen to some of the fans out there. So uh, we will. that'll be the last we tell you about that. Any final fantasy football thoughts for the evening, Dults? Now, uh, make sure to dress the players that you really want. If you If you go out of your way, to acquire a player either on the waiver wire or in trades, just be cautious. Make sure that you dress them, uh, key on the matchups, offense versus proper defense, and, yeah, you should be set. Make sure to hit save. I think that's the best one. So, But uh, the most important. Well, Aaron Brown on next week wasn't able to catch up with him this week as well for some trends and guys that are, our percentages are pretty low out there that you might be able to grab on your wire as well. And it's time in the next couple of weeks to start looking at your playoff format and what teams are going to be on buys. That'll be a good idea to do to uh, look at your roster, make sure you're not top-heavy on a team who may be on a buy when you are in your playoffs. So as I mentioned before, follow Dalts on Twitter at Rouge Dalts, myself at Dave Dawson 7 follow our fantasy football at CFL Fantasy RR. Enjoy the games this weekend. Four games and four nights. The Perfect football fans dream. Well, I guess if you're a guy like me, it's my dream because I have nothing better to do. You might be busy on the weekend. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next week.